the Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook, talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them. So welcome to the Instructor Podcast. As always, I am your jolly northern host, Terry Cook, and I'm delighted to be here and even more delighted that you have chosen to listen. As always on this show, I will be speaking to leaders, experts, innovators and game changers to look at ways that we can improve your driving school and potentially make you an even more awesome driving instructor. And today is no different. We are taking a deep dive into the theory test, looking at ways that you can better support your students and potentially become more knowledgeable around the theory test yourself. Also be giving you some top resources that you can use yourself and provide to your students. And today we're joined by theory test expert and create a theory test explained Chris Benstead. But before we dive into the episode, I want to take a moment to ask you to subscribe to the show. So wherever you're listening, whether it's on Spotify, Apple, wherever, go and click subscribe. So this drops straight into your feed when we release a new episode every Sunday or any of the bonus episodes we do. And make sure you're hanging about to the end of the show when we're joined by a driving instructor who is going to give us a top tip and some advice on how we can become even better driving instructors. And today we'll be joined by the ever delightful Sarah Baldock. But for now, let's get stuck into the show. And we're now joined by the man behind Theory Test Explained, Chris Benstead. How are we doing, Chris? Really good. Lovely to see you as always. Always a pleasure to have you on, because uh, some of my listeners may know you from the Green Room episodes we do, but we're in a slightly different guise today, and we are talking about the theory test and uh, also your uh, your combatants against the theory test, which is theory test explained. Now, but before we dive into that, I'm going to ask you the question, I ask everyone when they come on the show, uh, leaders, experts, innovators, and game changers is the tagline, and you are not allowed to make your joke about experts that you always make. Uh, which one <laughs> or ones are you? I, it's been I don't know how long that we've that we've done these things, and I've I've still never really figured it out. Um, but I read an awesome book called Tribe, which is about leading, being a leader, but not necessarily having to to you know sit on a throne or or whatever it is, and just have good people around you who have the same values as you, and that you can then influence that way. Um, so I suppose leader, but probably not from the traditional, you know, view of it. Um, and I, I prefer heretic. Um, so, uh, if you want to add that to the list, I'll go with that one. It is experts, innovators, game changers, and heretics, uh, and demigods possibly. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, I That's would... an option. <laughs> I am going to put in a potential game changer. I think what you're doing around the fairy test, both with learners, uh, tentatively with ADIs, I think, and also with what you're doing in your campaign almost to the DVSA uh, has the potential to be quite uh, a game changer for the industry. But um, we'll, we'll, time will tell, Chris, so no pressure. Um, but I do want to speak to you a bit about what you're doing, obviously with fairy test explained and so forth. But the... First question I want to ask you is, and this is definitely a loaded question, but what's wrong with a theory test? We've got, if we were short on time, we could do what's right with the theory <laughs> test. It's quick. No, I want to know what's wrong. <laughs> so what, what's the swearing policy on this you one? Can. Cool, it's crap. It, it isn't fit for purpose, in my opinion. Um, I don't see the point of it. I think there's a lot of issues for a lot of individual people trying to to access it and take it and if we go back to the initial point of why is there a theory test it is to make people safer on the road because that's that's got to be you know the goal the the whole point of everything is to identify a minimum standard to make people safe safe enough and it doesn't uh, the majority of people pass their theory test and if we're generous two weeks later, probably wouldn't pass it again. Um, I say generous two weeks later because it's probably the next day or once they've walked out the theory test centre. Um, yeah, it, it's the, a lot of the questions are pointless. Um, 
uh, to just three off the top of my head, etching your VIN number or number plate onto the window of your car, which everybody did in the 80s and early 90s. You can still buy the kit in Halfords. Um, it is still possible. Maybe it will make a comeback, but no one does. Vehicle watch schemes. I am not aware of any that are active in the UK. Uh, there's still a question about vehicle watch schemes. And then um, topping your, your battery fluid up. You know, batteries are now sealed. I don't know of anyone that does. You know, maybe it still happens occasionally, but it's pointless. And if you're asking pointless questions, no one's going to give it the respect that it needs. We should make it worthwhile. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a, 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 a split system of if mechanical stuff is important enough, then let's make sure that they go and do a two-hour course that I bet Halfords would would happily provide sponsored at cost basis because it gets people in the door and maybe they can give them a loyalty card. And I have had the conversation with with Halfords, but they will want it to come from the DBSA before they're interested. Uh, Or if, you know, even with eyesight, you know, when you look at the practical test, well, let's get them to bring an eyesight certificate. Um, The same thing with the theory. If, If first aid is that important, then let's have a little... Okay, you go and do your one hour first aid, your one hour mechanics, and and then you do your theory. So if if it's that important, let's do it. If not, at the risk of putting myself out of a job, let's scrap it. Do you think it should be scrapped, or do you think it should be completely revitalised? No, I I think there's really important information that people should know. But if if you're not going to even do it slightly properly, then probably... I don't think there's anything on the theory that people will not have learnt in the car with their instructor to that will affect safety. They might end up getting, you know, an extra parking ticket from doing something that they shouldn't have. Or they, you know, going into a yellow box, which is is more an inconvenience than a danger. But um yeah, I, I think that, you know, it it needs to, it needs to have a point, and if there isn't a point, or or uh, having had a conversation with Graham Hooper yesterday, a learning goal, um, which is a phrase I'm trying to use more, it doesn't come naturally. Uh, point is more my thing. Um, if there's not a point to it, then I, uh, I I I just don't see why we're doing it. Let, let's change it. Let's make it better, and and then because you wanted the long version, you wanted the, what's wrong with it. Um, the majority of my pupils, and this is slowly the proportions are changing, have some kind of additional need. You know, they're coming to me because they're failing, not because they want to pass and start at the beginning. So uh, the the accessibility for people, it's a very written test. It's, it's very wordy. It's not well written. The accessibility of it is is not good even with additional accommodations. The very fact they're called additional accommodations and it sounds like they're going to put you up in a hotel for the night is, you know, extra help. Let's call it that. Um, extra support if you don't want to make it help. But, yeah, let's make let's make it accessible um, and improve the way that we can do that. What just to clarify when you talk about your pupils, you're not referring to your learners, are you? You're talking about the people that come to you for the the theory test. That there's a mixed bag question. Uh, they they are my learners from the point of yes. view I don't have a car. Um, I this, this is partly a sore point because I'm still a driving instructor without a car. Um, theory is still a driving instructor's domain, although not regulated by the DBSA. So if they don't like it and take my badge, I get to still work. Um, so uh, you don't have to be a driving instructor to teach theory. I think you should have to be. I think that would be brilliant. And if we made it that it was just driving instructors, um, maybe we would then take it more seriously. But so, so from my perspective, they are my learners because you know I, I see it as one whole thing. But no, it is the the people that I am doing theory training, theory support, uh, theory advice with because uh, I work on a number of different levels. So, and, and I want to get on to kind of the, the impact on instructors and pupils in a moment, but you, you spoke about the language there, like the the, the word etching and um, gradients and 
the fact that some questions have two correct answers, but one of them is the one that AVSA wants you to use and, and that kind of stuff. So in your experience, how off-putting is that for students? So maybe the ones that are struggling and it's just dispiriting because they've got these stupid questions as well as the stuff they actually need to know. It's twofold. On one side, you've got the um, it makes me th- feel thick approach which anyone who's got any additional need has has experienced the i'm not good enough the you know the that it's not it's not because of something we 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 see a negative instead of a difference and it the written test doesn't accommodate difference at all well and you know once you start having the conversation with the person they get it absolutely what they can't do is engage with that very limited structure of these are the words on the screen and these are the answers how do i know which one is their answer as you said um and it can be subtle and some of it is lazy on behalf of the writing of the questions and great gradient's a lovely example because one of the one of the questions says downhill gradient well surely it's just a downhill we're putting gradient in there purely to make it sound more technical but I, I I think that the the other side of that is that it it makes it elitist, and it's not just about the fact that it's how it that you know that they can't do it because it, it's them that can't do it. It's something wrong with them. All their mates passed, and they're not. It's that actually, you know, it it puts it puts an obstruction in there. It puts a, a problem in at that point. And it's a problem that shouldn't be there. It should be easy. Driving's not complicated. Uh, no, I think once you've mastered the basics, the rest of it then, well, I shouldn't say the rest of it, a lot of it is is common sense and attitude and mindset. Um, but we, we spoke about the language. How much of a problem is the language that's used on the test? It's... So when you, when you look, when you start to analyse the test, I've learned so much since specialising. And I, I thought I was pretty good at theory. I'd go down to McDonald's and, and we'd sit with the free Wi-Fi and a coffee, which occasionally I'd even buy it if I was feeling flush. And we'd we'd sit and do the do do the theory and we'd go through the questions. And I thought it was a knowledge issue. So we'd be working on knowledge. I'd go as far as saying none of the people that I speak to have a knowledge issue. There's stuff that they don't know yet because they've never experienced it. It's new to them. But they um, the, the issue is their understanding. And if you... I'm, I'm assuming you don't speak French. Je parle petit français. Okay. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm gonna go with... Okay, cool. Right, so we'll go with German. Not without if, being offensive. If I got you to go and sit the, the theory test in German that wouldn't be fair. So if we purely look at the at the the subsection of people that are that are speaking in British sign language which is its own language it's not English with wavy hands it is its own language that the hands are representative of the words that are being used the two do not match they're not in line with each other but we make them do it in English with a bit of BSL support. There's not a word for catalytic converter, but we still expect them to answer a question about it and to be able to comprehend what it is when there's not a word for it. That doesn't make sense. So if you're trying to engage with something that is reading written, even if it's read to you, it's still in words, that 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 test doesn't doesn't necessarily work. And this is probably, you know, it... it <laughs> 40 30 40 percent of people that are taking the test are finding it difficult because of the way that it's written and the language that's being used well i mean that kind of brings me on to the the student and um instructor aspect of it because oh dear i i will see a lot online about when we see instructors talk about it it's often really negative you know students don't try they just use the apps they just you know they don't care and 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 I appreciate those people are talking generally. 
and I'm going to talk generally when I when I say this now because that's not my experience. My experience isn't that they don't care. It's that they either don't see the relevance of the theory test, which could be, as we've just touched on there, the fact that they see 20% of the questions are nonsense and 20% they don't understand, so why bother? Mm. They don't see the relevance of it. And they'll also have the peer pressure. I know you're not a fan of that phrase, but the peer pressure of their friends that don't, that also don't see the point of it. And they're the ones saying, you know, I didn't practice and just did this or whatever. And then you've got the people that, genuinely struggle maybe it's because they've got additional needs or maybe it's just because that's something they struggle with but i don't find it's because they just don't care or because they're lazy or that kind of stuff but i think that is the perception most instructors have is would you agree with that tick yeah absolutely and and why do something if it's pointless if if you don't see the point to it you're not going to continue to do it so when they look at it and they it's one or the other, either they they think it's pointless and, and therefore they don't engage with it or they find it difficult. And a lot of people won't admit to that. And it's that they find it more difficult than their friends. So, you know, it is, yeah, it is a, a, a challenge for everybody for their own reasons, but it's massive. And, and it starts really early it starts with us and it starts when we qualify to become a driving instructor because we do the part one in the same way and the part one is arguably even worse in its structure because we work to four bands we don't even tell people where they're struggling the feedback is well you're struggling in somewhere in 25 percent of of the whole thing but we won't tell you exactly where, which is why I get PDIs to start with an L test because at least that's fourteen categories. It tells them something. So, and I and I do I do PDI support as well, um, and a lot of it's the same. It's understanding. It's having a conversation about stuff. It's what is a dual carriageway. That's my starting question a lot of the time because it the definition is really important because if you're going to do um, a a question about dual carriageways, but you haven't got the picture of what a dual carriageway is, then you're not going to get the question right. And we tend to have the motorway style road, the bypass, the big two lanes on either side, barrier down the middle type dual carriageway in our head. Local to me, I've got a lovely village town high street Shops down either side, pedestrians all over the place, street lights, so it's 30 miles an hour, with a barrier down the middle. There's only one lane on either side. It's a dual carriageway. But and it, at the end of it, it's you know, it's got the dual carriageway sign saying this is a dual carriageway. And you show people that and it doesn't match what their perception is, and therefore they're not gonna get the answer right. So, you know. If we can improve our understanding, and I, I say that because a lot of the time when I talk to instructors, the definition isn't quite right of dual carriageway as, as the example. If we can get our understanding right and we can pass that on to the pupils, they're going to be better off as well. Use the right words. And by right words, I mean the words that are in the theory test. They might not be the right words. They might be the wrong ones. Um, we use junction all the time. Um, but on the theory test, you only emerge from a junction, you turn left or right into a side road. So junction is coming out of, which that can really help them get that visual picture in their head. Um, and, and then my three favourite things, which are the things that I don't believe are being taught by instructors uh, across the board, which is we drive on the left, we overtake on the right, And we drive clockwise. And that those three things are being demonstrated, absolutely. But they are rules in the same way that if you're reading, you know we read from left to right. Whereas Chinese people read from top to bottom. And sorry, people that are reading Chinese, you don't have to be Chinese to read Chinese. Um, But uh, (laughs) people who are reading Chinese read from top to bottom. And uh, people who are reading Arabic read from right to left we have that default approach. So if we teach that, again, 
that when they go into it, it's how the road works. It's how we stay safe. It's how we are predictable. If you suddenly get someone driving down the right hand side of the road, you know there's a problem there. That keeps us safe. So why are we not teaching a foundation rule as a rule? I'm not saying it's not being taught. It's not being taught as a rule. So it's it's just making sure that you know, we we have the building blocks in our teaching for the theory as well as the practical. And we are all guilty, absolutely me as well, but now I've given up the car a lot less so. Um, and I'm like the reformed smoker. I'm not going to stop going on about it. I mean, the dual carriage is one, I think, is, is the go-to for me. And, and you use the example there. And I think it's also a really good example of how English language makes it harder. Because whenever I get anyone ask me what it is, what does the word dual mean? And every now and again, you get someone that says fencing. I'm like, no, the other meaning (laughs) of the word dual. Um, Learners are coming in and they've got all these different reasons why they're not engaged with their theory, whether it's peer pressure or whether it's additional needs or whether it's just not seeing the point because some of the questions are nonsensical. So as instructors, you've kind of gave some pointers there about, you know, certain things we can be teaching, but... What can we be doing? Because I, I, I know that you're not an advocate for, you're a driving instructor, you have to be teaching theory to your learners. No. But what can we be doing as instructors? I, I think there's a lot of instructors in the same way that, you know, we, we teach one-to-one, but instructors often don't like standing in front of a room full of people. Pub- public speaking is the biggest fear in, in, in the world. It's the number one fear. Uh, it goes above spiders and sharks. And, you know, I've, I'm yet to hear of someone dying from public speaking um, unless they were shouting help and didn't get any. Um, but, it, you know, there's a fear factor there. I totally accept that same fear or dislike of teaching theory. It's not for everybody. I absolutely love it. Um, and, you know, I don't want to put myself out of a job. So I'm I'm happy if people don't want to do it, that's fine. But find a way of supporting. So we, we don't have to teach it, but we do 100% as a driving instructor have to support it. So have a system in place. Understand what the apps are and guide people away from bad ones. Just because it says DVSA on it doesn't make it a good one. Um. More and more so with artificial intelligence coming in that can help guide people, um, there's going to be apps coming through that are supported by that. So do your homework. Make sure you know what the things are so you can say this is the one that I recommend and this is why, not just because it says DVSA. Use the language that is appropriate, even if you then you know, define it and then say, but I'm going to call it this. We do it with the gas pedal. Um, and I know electric instructors, so it's p- instructors that are in, in electric vehicles that are still saying gas pedal because it's easier. Um, but, that, you know, it, it's kind of then just justifying it and just saying this is what the word means. But I'm going to, you know, I, I'm not that posh. Um, I'm not going to use that word. I'm going to use this. But as long, as long as they know what that word means, because otherwise they come across it and I get flashbacks to being in an English class being pointed at and saying, you know, do you know what this word means? Yes. Now define it and tell me what it means. I can't do that. I I know I'm happy with that word, but actually I I haven't got a definition. As the teachers, we should have the definition. Um, And then we don't have to necessarily use that language. We, We can use everyday speech. You know, I'm, I'm not saying we should, we should all be walking around talking in a particular way, but we need to make sure that if that is what they need to engage, then in the, sa- in the same way that we teach them to drive lots of different cars, not just our one, because otherwise they're getting theirs and they can't. Um, it's, it's that same thing with the language. Let, you know, let's make sure that they're prepared for whatever the words are. Don't let the words get in the way, because that's not the point. I have some fun with mine. I'll often say, uh, you can ask me three theory questions, and if I don't know the answer to one, you can have 30 minutes free on your lesson. Cost me an absolute fortune. (laughs) Um, But I think that, do you think at the heart of it, as instructors, we just need to be more engaged one way or another, whether that's even just getting in and saying, and I'm I'm sure you'll approve of this, but getting in and saying, 
would you like me to recommend someone like Ferris S Explains Health because that's not a service I provide? Just that level of engagement is very basic. Yeah, and uh, as I say, uh, as to a couple of things. One, the reason that it's called Theory Test Explained uh, is because I didn't want to just do it as my driving school because why should other instructors recommend my driving school? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I, I work alongside and I support other instructors. So most of my work comes through referral. Um, in fact, I give five pounds off of each each hour for referred work um, so that the instructor can be seen to be giving something as well. Um, and as a thank you for for the fact that people actually, you know, trust me enough with their pupils. Um, and, you know, so I, I think, yeah, it is, it is doing that. It, it's being open to it. And it's the same as when you get someone with a need, whatever that is, it doesn't have to be a, a diagnosis, just something. I had a pupil who was Russian. I talk too fast and too much. And, wasn't easy for I, you know I'd always try to change it but actually there's this lovely quiet instructor I used to work with he was far more suited I was the first person she phoned when she passed and she really appreciated it she went yeah it was brilliant she said it wasn't that you couldn't do your job it was that I needed something different so yeah the, the same thing goes with the theory let's be open to it and and kind of go all right there's a set of skills I've, I've tried um I, I just need need something else i need a bit of advice and if that advice is me having a chat with you as an instructor give me a call um you know i'm happy to to give stuff away um you know i like to think i'm, I'm kind of known for it is that it I'm, I'm not precious about the stuff um if there's something that i've got that that will help i'll let you know and then you can go and use it in the car And we're just taking a slight pause in the show to give a big thank you to all the latest sign-ups to the Instructor Podcast Premium. And they are Jennifer Hanley, Simon Miles, Abu Pakas, Omar, Derek Graham, Lee Coleman, George and Carla Fox. So big thank you to all those guys. Really appreciate you guys putting your trust in me that I can provide you with a smashing service and they immediately get access to over 90 exclusive shows for premium members that are helping them become better instructors, run better driving schools and forge better relationships with their students. And one of those exclusive shows is a brand new one with Kev and Tracy Field of Confident Drivers. And they are running an exclusive podcast over on the Instructor Podcast Premium called 10 Minutes to Confidence. And the first episode dropped last week. And we've had some great feedback on already. And it's brilliant to have Kev and Tracy on board, joining the likes of Bob Morton, Nick Oaks, Sam Harper and Robin Bates, who are exclusive content creators for the Instructor Podcast Premium. If you would like access to all this, or if you would like access to the expert sessions we've coming up, the one in April with Chris Spencer, for example, talking about how to teach roundabouts, or you would like access to the exclusive group coaching rooms we've got over there, then head over to www.theinstructorpodcast.com to find out more and sign up, or just go to the show notes so you can find the link direct over there to take you straight there so i'll look forward to you guys joining up but for now let's dive back into the show just as my own personal suggestion there and you know feel free to shoot me down on this if you want but i'll often you know one well, often pretty much every time someone gets in the car i'll one of the first things is is there anything you want to speak about on your theory and i'll expand that sir have you got any questions for me or would you like me to fire some questions at you that one always seems to be more popular, me mm -hmm. asking them questions, and because that often then leads to a discussion about that thing, and I'll tie it into the lesson, the, the, the driving lesson we're doing, and that seems to work quite well, and, and often it'll be a five to ten minute conversation at the start, but now and again, that'll go on for like 30 minutes plus a lesson, and I start feeling guilty, so I'm like, we're not driving, and I have to remind myself, no, because they're still gaining benefit, and end of lesson, they love it, and it's just that little introduction. And do you think that's really all we need to do at the start of a lesson, is that introduction? Yeah, it, it, it's it's about having the open door policy, have, having the ability for the individual who's with you to raise a problem if there is one. Um, and we don't always feel able to. 
So we, we've all done this. We, we've all sat and, and, you know, chewed the wasp over whatever the problem is. And, and, and actually, you kind of just get to the point where you just go, well, can you, you know, why didn't you ask me? Why would I, I can, that's easy. You know, it's, it's not a problem. Or it, it's, it's having the opportunity there. Because then we, when there is a problem, they'll ask you. And it's it's the same thing that you know I, I cover when I'm doing standards check work with with instructors is the risk is all in all important we know that but you decide how you're going to work who's doing what what's the job share but then you you move it to and how are you going to change that how are you going to say if you want more or less help that's the same for the theory as it is for the practical because it's one thing it's teaching it's working with the person towards their goal so giving them the dial to turn it up and turn it down to be able to the the open door to ask the question so that you yeah and and if you don't invite it especially at the beginning of the lesson it is a great time to kind of go well let's do that because you get in the habit of doing so You'll get it as a door handle question right at the end, and it'll be when you're rushing off to another lesson or there's something there. So if you build it in to your structure inside of your world of control, you're not going to get the problems that are caused caused from it. I want to ask you about the apps. And just those two words, I think, just, I don't know whether they strike fear or it's comedy value or whatever, but you say the apps to a driving instructor and everyone knows what you're talking about. And if yep. you look online again, we'll use the Facebook as the premise of this question. Apps are the root of all evil. They should all be burnt down and never looked at again. Are the apps bad, Chris? Are the apps bad? They do their job, which is revision. The problem is the industry is bad when it comes to teaching theory. So we work on a system of revise what you haven't learned yet. That's stupid. Um, I, I, you know, my 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 twelve year old is off doing a, a, a. I'm really jealous. He's off seeing Professor Robert Winston, who's the 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 biologist who looks like Super Mario but with glasses. Um, and uh, you know, he he he's off doing that today. But it's like him turning up to his his science GCSE. Um, without ever having gone to any of the lessons in between. And we'd be going, well, it's obvious why you haven't passed. But we we just go, yeah, just, just revise it, it'll be fine. It can be a useful diagnostic tool if someone's done the work and they're not doing well, like a mock test. Uh, I hate to say it. Um, but actually, you know, that's what they do. They They, they either assess what you don't know they don't teach. Sometimes from having been told what we're not good at, we can think about, about why we're not good at it and we can work it out. But that doesn't make the app um, good at teaching. So if you assess a monkey, uh, not a monkey, a fish by its ability to climb a tree, uh, all that stuff, if, if you look at the, 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 the apps for what they are, they're a really good revision tool. They're a really good way of going, have I missed anything? Don't start there. Um, I have a habit. If if someone comes to me who's already done tests, I'll use the app at the beginning and I'll say, do a mock test, but it's the only time we're going to do a mock test. Because the mock test on apps, apps and websites, the mock test takes random questions, 50 random questions for the L test from all of the questions available. There's 746 of them at the moment because they've just added a load about trailers because that's how you make people safe driving trailers is you ask them theory test questions they're not going to remember two days later. Um, so it's okay that we got rid of the B plus E because the theory says you should get professional training for, the, for towing a trailer. Dig over. Um, so you, in the in the mock, it will specifically ask from all of those questions. If you do, if you use a good app um, that has some form of very basic AI built in, which is just monitoring of which ones they get right and wrong, when you do either all topics 
or you do individual topics, it will ask you the ones you've got wrong. It will focus on those. So you've got tailored learning happening um, to some level. But it's not tailored learning. It's tailored revision. It's hitting you every time you get it right. Do it again. Just do it again. Would you do that with a manoeuvre? Just say, just keep doing it wrong and you'll get there eventually? It, it, no. You, you'd look at it and go, well, what, which bit's wrong and what can we change? You know, we need some reflection. But people don't even look at their um, their results from a test. They'll go on there, then they might do 20, 20 questions. They won't look, go, then go, which ones did I get wrong and what do I need to know to get them right next time? And one of my pupils yesterday actually pointed out that um, there's an error with all of the apps, because I'm not aware of any that do, do this differently, where the questions, the, the answers are in the same place each time. So she's using locational memory. This is this is the answer, not because of the words or what it is, because she knows that A is the answer to this question. Because she's revised so hard, but not learnt. So she can't answer the question. She just knows which one it is. No one tell your learners that. Don't point that to anyone. <laughs> it's, it's a real issue because the problem is when they come to me after potentially one, one lady failed 23 times. Frustratingly, she doesn't want help. She's just going to take it again. Um, but, you know, they come along after multiple fails. Those revision questions are useless to me because they know the answer. I got they, I get them to do it. They they still don't get 50 out of 50, which I find really frustrating because surely if you're if if you're doing that well, you the aim is to get 50 out of 50. People go and take the the theory test when they're not getting 50 out of 50. Very few people do. They still get things wrong on the questions that they've done 100 times. That shows a problem. So, you know, good 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 apps are are still good. We just need more, more stuff around it. So why do so many people just use the apps? Until recently, what else was there? Yeah. Driving instructors don't teach theory. Um, they might, we, we, we use, you know, going back and talking very, very generally. And I appreciate it's people out there that do things and, and all power to you. Please get in touch because I'll shout about it. Um, you know, I, I'd love a list of instructors that are theory friendly. Um, the DITC is probably going to be putting one together that, that kind of does that in some way. Um, but historically, traditionally, we don't teach theory. We support revision. So we will cover things in the car. And if there's a question, brilliant, ask me the question. And most instructors suddenly go, yeah, I can answer that. I'll explain it. But we don't do it as a matter of course for you know, theory itself. So um, th that's the thing that needs to change um, to, to be able to get something out of it. My notes here, and yes, I do have notes, uh, in, in big block capital letters, I scribbled quite aggressively with my pen, is written down the words, read the highway code. And that's something that, whereas um, the apps will strike, you know, fear into most people's, most instructors' hearts, is to read the highway code that strikes fear into mine. And, and I appreciate that a lot of instructors that listen to me say this will probably shout at me for saying this, but I tell them not to bother as in read it cover to cover, because it's the most boring book in the world for 90% of the population, 99% of the population. And if you read the highway code from cover to cover, you would not remember 95% of it. So I do suggest they read it, but I suggest a tie in with the lessons. But we see that many instructors use that phrase, read the highway code. Or you'll see uh, learners in Facebook groups talking about failing the, fail, the, the theory test and the comments from instructors. Well, have you read the highway code? You know, those. Where do you stand on, on that? Well, what they really mean is know the answers. And the answers are largely in the highway code. So they're not a million miles away. That it is, Be aware that there's this thing called the highway code that's got the answers in it. But actually, knowing isn't the issue. Um understanding is is the key so um I'll, I'll use about a boy because it's my favorite favorite reference um but i know you've heard it before 
uh, the first time I watched about a boy, um, Hugh Grant film, I thought it was the biggest pile of rubbish ever. Uh, didn't get on with it. It didn't. I did not understand it. I watched it. Didn't understand it. I turned thirty and I watched it again, and oh my god, my world changed. Um, I still don't think it's an amazing film, but there are there's some brilliant moments in it, and the message behind it. And I and you know I, I have since read the book, and actually that's that's where the message really is. Um, no, no offense to to the lovely Hugh, um, but I I think I understood it. It fell into place for me because I was ready to hear it. It matched with what my way of seeing the world and what what I'd experienced and knew. And I realised that some of those things were important that I didn't know before. So, so many go through a highway code. It's loads of words. Those words don't need to mean anything. So we shouldn't expect them to. They mean something to us. That's the other thing. We've got to remember we're all old. We're all um, uh, driving instructors. So, it, so road safety is important to us, we would like to think. Um, you know, I, I hope there aren't exceptions. So when when we're talking, you know, it's that thing of yeah, I can talk really well to to teenagers. There's things the, the, I, I joke about the fact one of the theory questions says that the road is well lit. That means something totally different to a teenager. Um, so why would they, you know, why would they have a clue? The um, chest compression question of what is the rate of chest compressions that you should give when giving CPR. Used to be Nelly the Elephant. That's the rate at which if you sing Nelly the Elephant to yourself, that's your chest compressions, 120 per minute. Um, uh, nobody knows Nelly the Elephant anymore. The, and also someone pointed out to me the other, di- other day that Nelly the Elephant, it sounds like they're packing packing their, their case and going off to die. Um, it's probably not what you want to be singing when, when someone's, you know, their heart stopped. Um, but then uh, Vinnie Jones brought along, I'm sure it wasn't his idea, but staying alive um, being the, the right right rhythm for, for it, the 120 per minute. So the BG, I'm not singing it, you can if you like, but the, the BG staying alive. So um, th- they don't know that song. Which is horrific. Their their music education is probably more worrying than their driving education. Um, so, uh, and rhubarb and custard is the other one, which was an eighteen year old pupil um, who told me about rhubarb and custard. So he went right to the top of the class on that one. Um, so it is finding ways that we can engage. There's no point in me saying to them, "It's a, oh, you've just got to sing nearly the elephant to yourself," if that means nothing to them. What I love is if you if you mirror 120 and overlap it, the two twos make a heart, which for me helps people remember it hugely. Two quick points on that. So first of all, if, if anyone listening hasn't seen it, go and check out the episode of The Office where they're practicing CPR. It's the greatest, or one of the greatest TV comedy moments of all time. And if that doesn't help you remember staying alive, I don't know what will. Um, Second point with the, the language barrier that we do get sometimes with the, the 17-year-olds. Now, somewhat ironically, this uh, lady I'm talking about wasn't 17. She was 32, I think. Um, but I, oh, we did a lesson the other day, and I said she was being a bit nippy. And I was meaning making the car go fast. She thought I meant something else, and we had to have a discussion. Um, so, yes, there's sometimes these language barriers that we have to be careful with, but... I <laughs> Mark read it. Um, so we are going to dive on to uh, Fairy Test Explained. I want to hear more about that in a second. But just before we do, Fairy Test Explained is obviously the second best resource available around the Fairy Test. What other resources are available that instructors can recommend to their students or instructors could potentially use themselves? So this is where I have to mind read you and, and, and assume that. Um, yeah, my first thought to, to that is is five minute theory. Um, an excellent shot, Chris. Was that potentially what you were you were hinting at? Um, 
because uh, I never know, because sometimes you're so generous that you, you don't list yourself at the top of the most important things. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I um, there are a number of different resources. And uh, Five Minute Theory, uh, you know, the bloke behind it's not, not, you know, not the easiest to listen to, but um, uh, definitely, definitely worth a listen. My mate Annie uh, on TikTok has done an amazing job of speaking to to the TikTok audience, um, and I recommend her to to everyone I work with. Uh, she's theory test practice on TikTok and goes on there. She lives on there. She's on there all the time. So I uh, she's got a theory test course. Um, she doesn't do one to ones, so they they get pointed in my direction and and Annie's doing some some great work on there and when we get a new question kind of filter through because we don't get to see the questions not allowed DVSA just will not I've had that conversation it, it filters through from pupils we'll we'll often you know share, share the bits that are coming through to try and piece it together and figure out what's going on when people are struggling um and I have to say because I was not a fan to begin with safe driving for life the DVSA website, there's a bit of teaching involved on there. It's not just revision. Um, and it'd be interesting to see where it goes next. Not the cheapest um, approach at the moment, um, you know, for, for for what it is. But they have promised that instructors are going to be able to access uh, a free module to, to be able to have a look at it and, and assess it and, and show it to their pupils, which would be really good. Um, and and then uh, James May's app because dyslexic people particularly seem to find it really engaging. It just works in a really nice way. And as instructors, you can get a free version of it. So if you go to um, go to the James May Theory Test website, the um, uh, you you have to give me a ADI number. You PDIs can do it as well. As long as you've got a PRN, you're fine. So so you could even do it if you were studying for your own part one. Um, you can go there. You can get a, f- a free copy of it for yourself to use, uh, and it's 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 very James James May. Um, uh, and the videos on there, I, I had the pleasure of being the um, uh, what's he call me the tame driving instructor. So I'm practically the Stig. It's like Stig's next door neighbour, isn't it? Being tame driving instructor. Um, it's I'm t- I'm sticking to it uh, that. Uh, yeah, I got to spend the day watching James and his diorama. Uh, that the the best um, explanation of yellow box junctions that I've come across. Um, uh, genuinely, it, it's worth it's worth the one pound ninety nine for the practical videos uh, based around why people failed the driving test uh, that are on there. That's an additional purchase. You don't get that bit free. Um, but I have I, I do keep asking, can we have? copies for driving instructors to use on lessons because it is really good um and then the the only other thing that you know that i i haven't said in that list is get in touch with me because if you've got specific needs then i can point you in the right direction if your pupils have got specific needs i can point them in the right direction and john rogers at disability driving instructors uh who's got a little book for teaching theory pupils um that that one of his guys wrote and uh they do amazing stuff there so if someone has more specific needs um disabilities as well john's amazing and unfortunately will be retiring soon uh so tap into him now Lots of awesome resources there, in particular Five Minute Theory. And for anyone wondering, that we'll be back with Season 5 soon. Uh, but for anyone listening, if you go to the blog for this episode on the, the website, which is uh, the instructorpodcast.com, at the bottom of that, I will be putting all the links over there to all the variety of stuff and uh, other bits as well, uh, recommended episodes, follow-ups, that kind of stuff. But uh, we didn't speak about the what is actually very probably the best theory test resource of all, which is Theory Test Explained, because that's one-to-one training it's someone that i consider the expert in the industry on the theory test yourself chris so just take a moment to tell us a bit more about you what what you actually offer both for learners and instructors just because you know i hate the word expert um so uh yeah i you know i I do one-to-one theory training uh people then kind of go what is that it's whatever the individual needs to be honest because I, I use Theory Test Pro uh, because as an instructor, 
it's really good to be able to uh, see what they're answering question by question. So, you know, yes, the apps are, are useful for them, but Theory Test Pro for me is the one that I can see exactly what my pupils are doing and I can manage it um, and I can juggle them around and give them access. So I, I make use of that. So there, there is revision in there as well. But then I do an introductory session, which works for absolutely everyone. It's not for people who have needs or are failing it is you know I, I, t- I teach people who've not touched any theory yet and and that's when I knew I was getting it right because that's what we want we want it to come in not not just clearing up the people that are struggling struggling so um I yeah I, I do an introductory session which breaks down the questions the process how it works where people make mistakes and then I start with and this is something I recommend you you do in the car start with the visual language stuff, so signs and lines. Because especially if someone's struggling with the written words, that helps make it make sense. But there's so much inside of one road sign that you can break down and talk about that then informs other stuff. And that's really my approach as the sessions go on. Some people just do one session. Other people do a session at the beginning and end, and they do lots of work in between that I support via WhatsApp mainly um, because I can do audio messaging, video messaging, and and answer their questions. Um, Other people do regular weekly or biweekly sessions. Um, So in doing that, I try to to give them the smallest thing I can that will have the biggest result. And that's the best way forwards because one bit of understanding, they can then use that in lots of different ways. It's a little bit teach them how to fish. So if you can give them that level of understanding, they'll then see similarity, flashing amber lights, mean proceed if it's safe. They're all over the place for lots of different things, but the the similarity is key. And then I also work to teach the rule, not the exception. And the theory test largely asks questions about exceptions. Um, instructors are a bloody nightmare for exceptions because different is dangerous. But let's start with the rule and then look at the exception, because actually the rule makes more sense. Even with roundabouts, where there's more exceptions than rules, if only there was uh, an, you know, an amazing training opportunity about roundabouts um, out there. Um, but yeah, it, I think that's what I do. I, t- I try to make it as simple as possible. I say it's because I am as simple as they come. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I do like to think that I've discovered in the theory something that I can really get my teeth into that works for me I I you know it seems to speak the same language as I do um except when the DVSA write the questions slightly frustrated you're stealing my segues but seeing as you have done a training opportunity for roundabouts you say well we may as well mention this now uh, on April the 12th you are hosting the first ever instructor podcast expert session um, I'll say that again, expert <laughs> session. Uh, you'll yep. have heard these elsewhere. We call masterclasses, but you know, we're calling them expert sessions, especially for Chris. Uh, and you're going to be doing that uh, presentation on how to teach roundabouts because it's something that, as instructors, we were never taught. You know, go back to the old um, PSTs. It was just just do it. So I think there was no teaching there. Uh, that's on April the 12th. Are you looking forward to that, Chris? Yeah, I, it, it's been Really cool. I, I genuinely have enjoyed myself geeking out about roundabouts. Um, and uh, it's something that I've looked at before because, as you say, there wasn't a PST. So a lot of instructors from the PST days, anyone who's, you know, in air quotes, new to the industry uh, who didn't do PSTs, preset tests, you were told what to teach and that's what you taught. Um, so therefore, roundabouts weren't in there. So we didn't get taught roundabouts because we're all about teach to test um, and <laughs> as an industry. So it, it's there's a real mix of things out there. And then they suffer from this whole there's more exceptions than rules. So and, and that that really makes it a challenge to kind of find, well, you know, do I teach 12 o'clock? Do I, you know, all these other things. So I I have I have delved in to roundabouts to the point at which other people have told me to shut up which is 
common, but specifically with roundabouts. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I, I genuinely think that I have discovered all of the questions, not necessarily all of the answers, um, I because I, I think sometimes there's interpretation and, and we all need to be able to do it our way. But I've definitely got everything that I need to have an opinion on on them and people can then decide what they do with that opinion whether they they disagree or agree at least they're thinking about them so i I, i'm really excited about it i'm looking forward to seeing what other people uh what other people's views are and uh yeah it's it's a brilliant subject well, I'm not going to plug you too much now, but just for anyone that's interested and wants to join that, uh, the Instructor Podcast Premium, uh, the interactive tier, uh, you can sign up and get the uh, the expert session with Chris around about in April, and then there's more coming up in May and June, and then there'll be at least a quarter after that. And if you only want to sign up for one month, sign up for one month and then cancel. So if you're only interested in the roundabouts, sign up for that one, and that's all you need to do. But you also get the entire back catalogue of Instructor, Pops, Instructor Podcast Premium goodness, and trust me, there's a lot and there's a lot of quality but back to you and the uh theory test explained and yes i did have to take a quick pick of your t-shirt to remember what it was called then um, um you, you work with students a lot as you say but i, I know that you've worked with uh, pdis and, and uh before to help them with their theories so anyone that wants help uh and any instructors that want to delve back into it or any pdis can come to you but also, you've done presentations around this in the past. I know you did one for Intelligent Instructor um, and, and a couple of other places. So can people come to you for additional help and can they come to you for these expert sessions slash masterclasses? Yes. So uh, I I um, uh, um, you know, have knowledge, we'll teach it. Absolutely. Whatever you, you know, whatever the thing is, ask me if i if i don't think i'm qualified or don't have the knowledge that i need either i'll go and find out or i will you know i'll, I'll tell you who to go to cuz that's with my ditc hat on that's what we do we point people in the right direction um but yeah with the with the theory absolutely i've done training for instructors who want to basically take my job from me and i have no problem with that uh, i want more theory trainers out there and and i'm working on putting some things together um you know it, it's figuring that out the best way forwards but i can definitely give some some guidance and training on how to and learn from where i've gone wrong and the things that i've learned along the way um and and also you know as you say with with pdis uh a lot of it again is is clearing up the mess to to get them to a pass because they've done the hard work and just can't quite get there. But I, I'm getting people now getting in touch who are, you know, I'm, I need to do my part one. Can you point me in the right direction at the start of that journey, which it, which is brilliant. So I'm, I'm always open to, to the, the question. And I always say that I will say no if it's not. You know, I'm, I'm very honest about my, my lack of ability sometimes. Awesome. Well, uh, it- a new feature on a Spotify platform is that on every episode, there is the option to add a question. So if you were to open this on Spotify, you can see a question or a poll that I might put up on those that normally know that I love a good poll. Um, so, Chris, what question would you like to see on Spotify? It's the image of you dancing with the poll. Um, the uh, question that I would like to ask is, if you went and sat the theory test, and you know, get James May app, and you, you could you could do so uh, for no money. Um, but if you went and sat the theory test, would you still pass it? Well, for those wondering, I would get forty seven. I think I'm confident I'd get forty seven. But you do not have to listen on Spotify. You can just go over there, look at the episode, and answer the question. And I will publish the best answer, so you don't have to put yes or no. You can put an actual sentence there, and I will put them so everyone that listens to Spotify can see your answers. Uh, and Chris, ultimate driving song that I can add to the Instructor Podcast Spotify playlist. I, I struggle with this because I hate the same song over and over again. Um, and it's got to be something you can sing to because that, that's a rule in my car. Uh, and when I'm, I lost my voice, it was horrific. I just, I missed it so much. At the moment, um, my two kids, 12 and six, would not forgive me if I went anywhere away from Dr. Hook 
who I grew up listening to and they are now loving. Um, and it would probably be Millionaire by Dr. Hook. Okay. Possibly um, cover of the Rolling Stones, but I'm going to, I'm going to go Millionaire. I mean, there, there was what, eight, uh, Big Learner Relay choir songs you could have chosen from, but no, we'll go for that one. It's fine. <laughs> it's me to, for me to listen to. For other people, check them all out. They're awesome, and they will destroy perfectly decent songs for you for the rest of your life that you will only hear the cover version. But for me to drive down listening to that myself, not no, no. You know me better so, than that. Where's the best place for people to find you for all theory test goodness, Chris? Um, for the theory test stuff, uh, the moment... Facebook is is my go to. So theory test explained on Facebook. Um, uh, I'm working on the theory test explained website, and you can get hold of me through there. But to be honest, any of the channels that you can get me on, so the DITC or, or theory test explained, you know, shout they all come to the same place. But if you want to put pupils in in the direction of me through theory test explained is the number one, or message me directly, and I've got a nice little explanation of what I do. Uh, which is customized to you as an instructor, so you can send it out and it can be your recommendation to them, and that will save them on the hourly rate for the for the one to ones. Cool. Well, as I mentioned earlier, you'll find some links in the show notes. If you head over to the blog, uh, you'll find the full transcript and some more comprehensive links and details over there. But uh, yeah, big thank you for joining us today, Chris. It's been uh, delightful getting stuck into the theory test. Yeah. No, thank you very much. So a big thank you for Chris Benstead there for joining me on the show. Really interesting conversation, getting deep into that theory test and looking at why students struggle and how we as instructors can do better. As you heard throughout the show, a lot of recommended resources for you there. All of those will be either in the show notes or best place to find them, head over to the transcript blog on the Instructor Podcast website. That's www.theinstructorpodcast.com. You can find all the links and resources mentioned over there in the blog. But a special shout out to Theory Test Explain. Make sure that you are sending your students over there that are struggling and there is no harm at all in you as an instructor, maybe even heading over yourself to improve your own knowledge. But we're now going to be joined very, very special guest as we get some top tips on how we can become better in driving instructors. And these are going to be an end of every episode for at least this season. So, uh, Let's see what we've got. So we're now joined by ADI extraordinaire, Sarah Baldock. How are we doing, Sarah? I'm all right, Terry. How are you? Uh, All the better for seeing your smiley face. So thank you for joining me on this inaugural uh, little mini episode for the Instructor Podcast, where we're just getting some tips from instructors. So to start off with, do you want to tell us your top tip for driving instructors? Um, Well, this is something that um, I've thought about quite a bit um, when you asked me to do it. And what I've come up with is something that I do quite a lot at the moment, and I'm actually a little bit addicted to it, if I'm honest, um, is I listen back to myself when I'm teaching. So at the end of the day, I'll take my dash cam out of the car, which has got audio on it. And if there's anything that's happened or anything, I think, oh, I want to, you know, listen back to that. I'll do it. And then I'll either decide that I've, you know, made a hash of it or how I can improve it. Or um, if it didn't go the way I wanted, what could I have done differently? Um, But also most interestingly that I found recently is that it's not necessarily about could I have said things in a, a, you know, a different way. It's more my tone of voice that I've noticed um, can actually come across to some people, like I'm either listening to myself on the audio, that like I'm either bored, which I'm not, but that's my tone of voice. Um, so it's just interesting things like that that I've picked up from doing it. And I um, I started doing it because one of my students um, actually called me out and said that I was um, constantly criticising him, constantly criticising him. And I was really shocked and really upset. And so I went back and listened and he was kind of right. I was. <laughs> um so it, and I you know and I apologized to him and I said you know we chat we talked about it and I said I've listened back and you're right you're absolutely right um and so it, for me it's been a really interesting and now I'm kind of addicted to it 
listening to myself. So um, it's for me, it's something that I, I do on a regular basis, sometimes even um, on, a, on a daily basis, if I'm honest. Um, so, yeah, that's my top tip. So if you can listen back to yourself when you're when you're teaching. Is that why you agreed to do this? So you can listen back to yourself. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and I suppose for anyone that I'm not dash cam, they could always just press record on the phone and use yeah. the voice notes on there. So, yeah, good shout. I like that. I also wanted you to recommend a resource. So for any instructors listening, what resource would you recommend? Okay, so this one, I um, I used the MagBoard, which is the the magnetic, it's from the DIA. It's magnetic um, where you've got little cars and little yep. street scenarios and all that sort of stuff. I use that. That's not my recommendation. Use it because it is really good. Um, but I found it to be a little bit, um, what's the word? There wasn't enough scenarios in there for me there wasn't the ones that I wanted so I found it a bit limited and I happened across this um I've, I've written it down so I didn't forget there's a company called or an ADI um and it's tailored driving and she does individual street scenarios that you can order just one of so she does a pack as well she does a really lovely it comes in a nice folder and there's I don't know how many I think there's about 90 different scenarios that you can have little cars that go with it and all that sort of stuff she sells it as a pack but she also sells them individually they come laminated and I use those in conjunction with my mag board so that is my um, resource recommendation nothing fancy nothing electronic but um yeah so it's tailoreddriving.com that's who I would recommend you go and have a look at. Well, people can find the link for that in the, the blog post for this episode as well. So that's great. And I, I might have a look at it myself, actually. Um, and then the ultimate driving song. So you've been on the podcast a couple of times on the green room, but um, I've never asked you for your ultimate driving song. So what song are we adding to the Spotify playlist? Well, I think it's already on there, which is annoying. Um, it's Summertime by Fresh Prince. Okay. Hey. Don't think that is on there. Is it not? Don't think it is. Are you sure? I'm sure nope. someone's mentioned it before. Anyway, that's mine. That's mine. Um, that is the song. If I'm driving and that comes on, that kind of represents my style of driving. And that is why I love it when I'm driving. Excellent. It's a great choice. Um, definitely. I don't think it's on there, but either way, it will be now. Oh, yes. uh, so that's good. Um, and just while we're on here, you are one of my lovely premium members. Now, over in that premium content, there's all kinds of different shows on there and get-togethers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to take the opportunity to ask you, what's your favourite? What do you like about that? The premium stuff. The favourite episode of the premium stuff or just yeah. about premium? The the episode. Oh, can I give you my top three? If you can't hurry down to one, yeah, you can give me a top three. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed Lee Sperry's first one when he was talking about why he changed to coaching. I thought that was yeah. really nice and honest. I loved that episode. Um, I really, re and this is in no particular order, by the way. Um, I really loved the last one, Sarah Hall. You know I did because I, I spoke to you about that, didn't I? Um, that I, I thought was amazing um, and what an inspirational woman she is. And the other one was the coaching crowd. I really, really enjoy the coaching crowd one as well. So, and I couldn't narrow it down. If I had to, if you had to push me, I'd probably say Sarah Hall. I, well, I can get all three of those, definitely. Um, but I think Sarah will be up there. Uh, that was a, a good one. So yeah, good shout for your top three episodes there. Uh, and then I am going to ask you about the premium. What do you like about the premium stuff? Oh, well, for me, I like the fact that it's really accessible CPD. Um, I'm not a big... Um, getting together in a massive group fan. I don't really like going into a room where I don't know people. And so for me, I like the fact that I can I can dip in and out. I can listen to stuff that interests me and I can do it in my own time, at my own pace. And that's what I really like about it. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for joining us on this little bonus segment at the end of the, uh, the podcast. Welcome. Thank you for asking me. And for everyone listening, thank you for listening to this show. I hope you've enjoyed it. And remember, and this is especially for Joe Wilson, if you're not enjoying your lessons, you're not doing it right. The Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook. Talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them.